All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are here today for the CIFPAC Summit, Radical Reimagination. My name is Amy DiLorenzo. I'm, I am with University of Illinois Extension and the Discovery Partners Institute. And uh, we are speaking today with Philip from Self-Help Financial Credit Union, um, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about uh, different ways that we can think about radically reimagining financing the food system. So um, Philip and I were talking a little bit earlier about how there's lots of grants and funds out there that are happening right now, but there's also traditional ways to go about financing your food business dreams. And I think that there's a lot of opportunities to do that. Um, especially in communities that um, these, typical, these types of financing opportunities have not been available in the past. So Philip can talk to us about the types of work that um, his organization is doing in Chicago. And uh, we're just gonna have a little chat. So welcome, Philip. Thank you so much, Amy, for uh, inviting me onto this panel. And uh, I'd like to also appreciate uh, the Chicago Food Policy Action Council uh, for hosting this event. Uh, Self-Help uh, Credit Union is a community development financial institution. Uh, these were institutions that were set up purposefully uh, to help promote economic development and uh, to uh, promote uh, capital access in disinvested communities. So um, <clears throat> as an organization, we have uh, a federal credit union um, uh, uh, you know, self-help credit union, uh, the Center for Responsible Lending, which would be our policy uh, division, as well as a loan fund. And these together help us to achieve our mission, which is uh, not only to invest in underserved communities, but then to uh, serve as a catalyst for building wealth and becoming self-sufficient in in these communities. So it's, it's a great pleasure to, to join you here to talk about uh, some of our work in food systems lending. And we are not saying that, um, uh, that we do not need a grant financing uh, to, to help drive uh, growth in businesses, but then uh, we can actually deploy capital in ways that help to, to build uh, and not uh, subtract from, from that growth opportunity. Right, so you see it as a mix of different opportunities, right? It's not just one stream of, of capital, right? So I think that the opportunities that are out there right now are very exciting and they, they give um, organizations and communities a jump start. But what you're thinking about is more long-term sustainable community investment that um, really grows with the community and with the organization that is investing with you, is that correct? That's right. And, you know, there's there's always a place for grant financing, especially when you consider the times we are at now with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this was a time when uh, a lot of organizations were suffering because, one, uh, it was almost impossible to, to conduct their trade. Uh, we had a lot of businesses, uh, especially restaurants and other uh, businesses within, within the food industry, uh, have to uh, close up shop because they could not sustain their payroll or meet their uh, obligations. And, uh, you know, grant financing came uh, to their aid. Uh, a lot of communities organized and uh, were able to build uh, loan funds or, you know, uh, grant funds uh, that uh, helped a lot of these businesses remain open or sustain them uh, towards uh, safe reopening when, when the rest of the economy comes, comes to life. But what we're saying is beyond that, we're going to start thinking about what does growth look like after the pandemic? What do we need to have in place as businesses uh, to sustain uh, some level of growth and exceed uh, our expectations into uh, 2022 when, um, you know, hopefully most of the economy will be open. So using uh, debt, uh, leveraging debt uh, to, to support that is what we, we do. Uh, we are not a granting uh, organization, although we partner with a lot of uh, philanthropic organizations that provide grants. Uh, but what we do is uh, we analyze businesses to see uh, what uh, level of support they need as far as uh, leveraging debt is concerned and what part we can play 
to ensure that uh, these businesses can actually uh, sustain their growth uh, using that debt capital. Excellent. So can you talk to me um, a little bit about what if someone is starting a business from scratch or they're expanding their business, what kind of opportunities you have for them um, currently right. and so, what you could see happening in the future? Yeah, and that's a good question because uh, we, we get a lot of uh, queries from people uh, wanting to uh, start a new business. Uh, now, and our small business lending, uh, we do some startups, though not too many of them. We're very selective about the startups that we actually look at. Uh, but like a lot of uh, <clears throat> CDFIs and other banks, uh, we'd like to see some level of uh, uh, commitment to the business. Uh, you know, uh, what equity are you bringing in? And then do have you started operations that we can actually uh, analyze and see how well you're doing. So we typically want to see at least two years of operation uh, for startup businesses. Uh, what we do is uh, if you don't have that, uh, the loan amount that you can actually get through us is, is just limited to $50,000 and below. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we want to see businesses that will actually have a transformative impact on our food systems. So not just any business, uh, you know, because we know that uh, food is not all equal. Uh, you know, there's good food and uh, there's food that uh, is not very uh, sustaining to human life. So uh, we'd like to look at businesses that actually uh, focus more on uh, healthy food options. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I like that emphasis on good food because I know that's something that SIFPAC is really pushing with the good food purchasing policy. And there's lots of different ways to define good food and measure it and um, trace it throughout the system. So I think that's a really great um, you know, tie into what we're talking about this, this entire week. Yeah. Um, can you speak a little bit about the actual locations that you have in Chicago and the communities that they serve? <clears throat> yeah, sure. So. Um... Now you'll see self-help under uh, two main banners uh, in, in Chicago. Uh, you'll, you'll know us as uh, uh, Second Federal, which is uh, you know, in the Little Village area. Uh, this was um, a bank that was acquired by self-help in 2013. And then you'll also know us as Seaway Bank, uh, which was acquired by self-help in uh, 2017. Uh, that's in the Chatham area. So <clears throat> we have had this presence for, for that long. And now, you know, uh, people will uh, easily identify uh, the self-help logo uh, from these two, uh, you know, banks. And we have some great staff out there, you know, who, uh, you know, willing and ready to, to work with you to help uh, with your lending needs. Great. Yeah. So that actually ties into my last question, which is what's the next step? So if someone is looking to um, partner with you or go to your institutions, what do they need to do? Can they make an appointment online? Do they just show up in person? Is there any kind of forms they need to fill out ahead of time? Um, yeah. How do they, how do they take yes. the next step? Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic question. And there, there are different ways to, to reach, reach us, of course, directly by uh, walking into our branches. Uh, we have a branch network in Chicago or uh, visiting our website, uh, selfhelp.org uh, uh, is our website uh, where you can get uh, information there or calling our uh, business development uh, offices uh, directly by uh, you know, calling the, the bank uh, and uh, asking to speak to our business development officers. For food uh, systems lending, uh, we have uh, our senior business development officer there, Cynthia Valle, in our second federal office. And uh, in uh, the Seaway office, we have uh, our business development officer, Chris uh, Dorsey, who handles and routes all of our food systems uh, inquiries. And, you know, we, <clears throat> we support a lot of businesses and business types, you know, uh, we lend to food aggregators, we lend to distributors, uh, grocery stores, are a good pick as well, uh, commercial kitchens, incubators, 
uh, food innovators of various kinds. So, and our lending includes lending for real estate, equipment purchases, uh, we do construction lending, uh, we do business expansion lending, leasehold improvement and the like. Yeah, it's really fantastic to see that you're touching all the different parts of the food chain. I think that's really important. And I like that it's a mix of, you know, capital investment for, you know, actual facilities and buildings, but it's also for growth, you know, so I, I really think that that's very special that that there's every part of the food chain that, that you could that you could affect and then also um, even within those pieces of the food chain, um, individual parts of that as well. So that's wonderful. I think that's a really, gives people a lot of space to dream about where they could see the most impact and the most growth for themselves. Um, so it's really wonderful that self-help is there to kind of help them realize those dreams. Yeah. Uh, is there that, anything else yeah. that I've missed? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to say that, you know, uh, it shouldn't be lost about why we actually do this, you know. Um, uh, communities of color have been uh, disinvested for a long time. Uh, you know, there's very, very uh, poor growth in these communities. And, you know, we still have this conversation in 2021, uh, which is, is quite sad. Our focus as, a, as an organization is to actually uh, put in a lot of investment in these communities, uh, create economic development opportunities in these communities, whether we're looking at our food systems lending or other sectors of the economy where we lend. So far, you know, through our 40 years of existence, uh, about 80, over 80% 80 of our loans have gone to low income borrowers. You know, we, we have 30% uh, of our lending going to rural areas, 40% to women, 61% uh, to people of color. And, uh, 69% uh, of our lending has gone to underserved areas. So uh, this is actually why uh, CDFIs were set up and it's definitely why we have stuck to this mission, uh, which we consider very, very important. We, through our policy uh, division, we fight predatory lending practices uh, in, in these communities because they always pop up, right? Uh, they're always uh, there with us uh, to take uh, full advantage of the communities that are not uh, getting adequate access to financial services through conventional banking systems. Yeah, I mean, it's sad, but true. So I'm wondering, um, can you talk a little bit about what you see in the Chicago area in terms of why this is the place for food lending, um, food service or food systems lending that you find to be very important? Yeah, it's extremely important because Chicago is kind of like a conduit to the uh, to the rest of the United States as far as uh, you know food coming in, uh, whether it be food coming in from California or food actually produced in the state. Uh, a lot of uh, food production actually happens in in the state of Illinois, and that is sent out far east. You know. Uh, and uh, to other parts of uh, the Midwest. So Chicago is definitely a very, very important state when it comes to uh, food production. It's also a very important state when it comes to uh, food businesses that come with, uh, you know, these uh, heavy production, uh, uh, you know, uh, units. Uh, we see that, um, uh, you know, a lot of businesses actually come out of them and, uh, uh, take advantage of uh, the robust agricultural production that happens there through uh, adding value to the food that's produced, uh, whether as aggregate or commercial kitchens, uh, it creates a very, very uh, great, uh, you know, catalyst there uh, to help spur on uh, the, the, the growth of, of our food economy. Yeah, I think that Chicago is a very healthy ecosystem in terms of the opportunities that exist here. I was joking with a with a colleague the other day that Indiana thinks they're the crossroads of America, but I would argue that maybe Chicago is when it comes to food. You know, we're halfway between Canada and Mexico. Right. We're pretty centralized in terms of between the coasts, and so all food that that comes through the states, like in some ways, 
passes through Chicago is touched by some of either the crop production, the processing, the distribution, the logistics and things like that. So there's lots of opportunities. I mean, you mentioned commercial kitchens and incubators and food businesses. There's over 4,500 food businesses alone, you know, in, in Chicago itself. So that's not even thinking about um, large companies like ConAgra or Kraft or McDonald's that have headquarters here. So there's there's quite a lot of activity here. Um, so I think that you're very well situated to be here, and it's a very good place to be if you are interested in this type of work. And it's a and it's a great place for small businesses. You know, um, <clears throat> these small businesses are the ones that lift uh, up the, the middle class. You know, uh, these small businesses uh, are very accessible uh, to to a big part of our population. And uh, people get started uh, from very, very humble beginnings, uh, but then they end up uh, having a huge impact on our healthy food system. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I definitely agree that I think that the smaller organizations help lift their community, which helps lift all of us. So it, it, without each piece is very important, but um, if you're helping right. to grow those the smaller pieces to the medium-sized pieces, we're headed in the right direction. That's right. Yeah, so thank you very much, Philip. Um, if anyone has any more questions, I'm sure we'll put some links to um, the website and uh, in, in below, and uh, we will just follow up uh, as needed. So thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, we'll be happy to link our contact information uh, for the videos that I mentioned, uh, the business development offices that I mentioned earlier on, and uh, to our website and uh, to my personal email. Oh, thank you very much, Philip. All right. Have a great day. Thank you so much. All right.